Greetings, up chappers. And I'm the captain. And we're excited to be playing Epiphone guitars today. Let me just turn my knobs off. Sorry. Do it. I had a few do of it, them do it, do it. ready and prepared. Um, so yes, uh, earlier this year, uh, the sad passing of the Epiphone traditional pro uh, was announced, you know, as it sailed off into the sunset, never to be made again. But it's been replaced. That's a surprise. With the um, the Pro Two, the Pro Two. So this is this is designed to sit uh, in the catalog at uh, less than uh, an Epiphone Les Paul standard, huh. but not a lot less than Epiphone Les Paul standard because, in some ways, they they make it more affordable. So we've got the satin back and the satin neck, a few less color options, things like that, and in some ways they make it better. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> um, so this is like a 370 pound guitar I don't think it's available in that many colours it, it may literally just be these two colours but again I'll put a link in the description below and you can find out so you've got a sort of a coffee stained tobacco burst like you know the slash kind of vibe burnt around the edges lasagna not sure what this one's called it's like a sort of a cherry it's like a dark cherry burst isn't it or like a honey burst maybe honey could I don't be know. honey burst there's lots of paper on it though so it's it won't guaranteed tell you on that. It's guaranteed. It's guaranteed got, to be a guitar. It's got black and white pictures, so you know it's an old thing. Um, so we've got like the open coil pickups. It's it's just a it's just a different take on a Les Paul standard, but they call it the traditional Pro Two, and it's a thicky. I guess the first thing that Rob and I both noticed when we picked these guitars up was definite fifty eight inspired. Oh yeah, chunk of a chunker here. <laughs> yeah, it's got a big old neck on it, and it's. I mean, for yeah. me, it's a little bit too big, but I think um, a lot of people will enjoy the girth. If you're a if you're a girth seeker, then it's definitely <laughs> he's definitely a girth seeker. <laughs> then it's definitely something that you're gonna you're gonna enjoy. It's, it's as with all big neck guitars that I play. It's the problem is the initial sixty seconds, right? You know, of like oh, and then and then once you're used to it, you just end up going, yeah, I'm fine. This is there's so many you know what what like you know sort of um, there's a line. No, I was just going to say there's so many similarities between playing the guitar and, and other things in life. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I'd, so this very much feels like one of the, the more classic big Gibson necks that you would find, you know, typically inspired by the sort of the, the sort of the earlier Gibson guitars. <laughs> It's a satin finish and it's an open pore like finish as well. So it's kind of got, hasn't got the smoothness of like say a, a maple satin finish. Um, Cause I guess the wood itself has got more texture to it. Yeah, but um, I, I much prefer the feel. I think it's it feels nice. great. It is nice. I think it's one of those finishes as well that the more you play it, the more kind of naturally smooth and slidey it'll yeah. get. Oh for sure, it'll absorb your um, oil. Rosewood board, nice binding, mahogany body, maple top. Um, Plain maple top though, uh, you know all the usual, you know, good machine heads, Grover machine heads. But so let's get into the clever stuff. <clears throat> well, it comes coil tapping equipped, equipped with coil tapping. Absolutely. And if you pull this up, it gives you ten decibels of boost. Down, it's just true bypass. So it's kind of like having a boost distortion pedal built in. Yes, via this very friendly battery compartment. Yes, absolutely. Let's have a look, look, see. Have a look, have a look and see what it looks like. There you like. go, that's where it is. Ka-ching! That's where the ferry lives. Absolutely. Hello. <laughs> Which I guess means you could also uh, whack some EMGs in it if you wanted to. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just enjoying the action of this sort of... I'm trying to come up with it. How, how strong is that actually? That puts, you've been a you've been a very naughty boy, Rob. Pow! I wonder if I could launch a plectrum with it. Do, oh, great get, idea! Get a close up on great this plectrum idea. launching platform. We'll see if it will actually ready. <laughs> Whoa! -ho -ho! I used to have a game like that when I was Ca a kid. Catapults. catapults yeah. Wasn't it called catapults? Crossbows and catapults. Oh! And big up the crossbows and catapults crew. My mum, when my uh, parents got divorced when, we, when I was quite young, and the first house that we lived in after that, my mum literally didn't have. 
two pennies to rub together. Aww. And she, one of the little nice things that she'd got from before was this beautiful uh, crystal set, like decanter and glasses, and everything like that. <laughs> Brother and I played crossbows and catapults one day in the dining room. You know, literally, and and I kid you not, destroyed all the glasses that came with this thing. And but was it all the best game in the entire world? It was the world? best game ever. But oh, she was so upset. But it's fine because if you play crossbows and catapults, you've I've, got... yeah, I've become successful in latter life and have repaid her many times oh, over one. for the damage that I did when I was a child. Because that's what good children well, there do. There you go. Set up a store, pay your mum back for yeah. broken, broken stuff, <laughs> and the world's a better place. Did so, you have the ogre that threw stones I, as well? Do you know what? I kind of can't remember other than the fact that there were catapults and crossbows in it. Well, there was an ogre that threw stones. You could build walls to make I castles. I remember building castles, yeah. yeah and there were, the, um, yeah, there were people that threw the discs at other oh. things and stuff. And there was the... Um, the RAM rod thing you pulled out, sorry. Back in a day where the totally. only games console that you could play was a little stick on one side of the screen <laughs> and up and down a square with beep, beep. All the ones full of water, beep. remember those? Beep. Um, the water consoles, you get like a little yes, game thing full yes. of water and you press buttons and it squids the water. <laughs> And, you, and a ball would go, huh, huh, huh. Oh, my God. And, and you try and get the hoops on the stick. What is that like, relatively, like, you know, 35 years ago? Yeah, and now what it's... What a change in the last... Now your iPhone can... Yeah, you just virtual reality. Yeah. Man. See you later, world. This yeah. probably is virtual reality. <laughs> we're not even in real life right now. We just don't, we're not aware of it. Back to the guitars, then. Um, well, you said everything there is about these guitars, should I show them the boost? I want to see the, the, the tones, the taps and the boost oh, right. and all okay. kinds of stuff. Okay, so let's start with um, I'll tapping everything out. Wow, it's really high. Look how high that goes when you tap it. Wow. That's that a lot a, higher than that... I love that. Name the, what is the first word that comes to mind when you play that chord? Pete. Luther Vandross. Oh, Luther Vandross. Two, two words. Word Can't help it. Okay, so, uh, bridge. It's barkier than my dog is, and she's barky, tell me. Neckity neck. Let's give it some mud honey too. If you add in the, actually, this is probably better off on a rhythm sort of sound. Put it out 10 dB. Like Guthrie Govan once said, why would you ever want it not on? You know, <laughs> you remember that? So, uh, yeah, there are Nico Pro uh, humbuckers here, so kind of cool sounding pickups. Uh, what else is, uh, interestingly, the, the internet spec suggests it's a 15 dB boost and the sticker on the guitar suggests it's 10, 10 dB boost. So I, I would guess that it's probably 15 dB and they just didn't have a 15 probably dB 12. sticker. 5. Let's probably 12.5. Let's take an 12. average. <clears throat> Everything else about it is very Les Pauli, really. You know, you've got your uh, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. You've got your 14 inch radius, so sort of fairly flat fretboard. Is it wrong um, with me to wish that they had the same headstock as a Les Paul? Do you know what, I wonder, I don't know if that question's ever been answered. I mean, it's a, it, the, the break angle on the um, 
Epiphone is slightly different to a Les Paul, but I know I, I think you're talking more about the shape, aren't you? You'd rather yeah. have the. I just I wish it had the same headstock as a Les Paul. Do you think there's not an element of that's how Gibson? Sorry, keep, as a Gibson. Yeah, that's how Gibson keep the. Well, the, it should be the spec, not the shape of the headstock. Oh, it's just me. If if I had a if I had a Gibson headstock, I think I'd love it more. Yeah, that's it's bad. Of every, me, I know. Everybody says that. Although, to be honest with you. Given the amount of people that draw attention to the fact that they prefer the Gibson headstock to the Epiphone, I've never looked at an Epiphone Les Paul and a Gibson Les Paul and gone, oh yeah, headstock looks much. I don't know, it just doesn't register in my brain. Yeah. I just, just don't see it. Um, I just wonder if it's because it's, it's two separate. It, but Epiphone's owned by Gibson, isn't it? So the, the, the brief, very brief potted history of Epiphone is it's, Here we a, go. it's a very old firm started by, unsurprisingly, a, a Greek... Uh, immigrant to America um, uh, who was a guitar repairer and it was his son uh, Epi uh, I forget what the, the, the guys um, did he phone up someone and say look I've got this idea no, maker. phone is uh, the Greek work for sound oh. so it was Epi and phone was his thing and he was making big jazz archbody guitars anyway so he was quite successful in the early 20th century and then less so I think you know he got kind of Gibson just kind of became the guitar of choice and he was struggle he was struggling and then, and in the end he sold his uh, business to Gibson and uh, for a while Gibson just mothballed it and didn't redo really anything and then right. obviously more recently I say more recently you know back in the 70s they sort of revived it as the Far Eastern brand that they would uh, use and so some of the guitars in the Epiphone range are um, remakes of original Epiphone guitars, like right. the Casino, for example, was a, an Epiphone guitar. It's a Greek Greek brand. Wow. Uh, well, I mean... It, well, it's heritage is It's Greek. heritage, yeah. <laughs> Probably can't keep that bit in there, <laughs> If you're tuning in right now to wonder why Lee is, uh, is laughing, that's because the rest of what was just said has completely been cut out by Rory. Thanks, Diz. And uh, it's because it was massively <laughs> oh, inappropriate. I don't think it is. Is it inappropriate? No, it was just funny. I want to hear kind of what my guitar sounds like through my amplifier using all the splits and taps and everything just because it's a bit different. If you ever want to start a law firm, yeah. could you call it splits and taps? <laughs> yeah, why not? That would be really good. Um, I was going to start my uh, law firm in Norwich and call it Norfolk and Chance. <laughs> 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 anyway, this is the neck pickup. Um, for those of you that are perhaps new to this channel and thinking, who are these two imbeciles? Um, I'll just explain. <laughs> Essentially, when you what's happening here on a humbucking pickup, when you pull, it's fairly normal on a lot of guitars to be able to either reduce the number of windings uh, that go round the pickups, which is called a coil tap, or split it completely back to its you know single coil form. Uh, what does this say? It is a split or a tap. On these. It says here, it's the coil tapping equipped. It says coil tapping. So this yes. is this again. In fact, there's an easy way of finding out. Hum. I would say it's a split. People always, always get the, the word tap and split confused and they sort of interchange them because the ultimate sound that you get out the end isn't really that different. So it's almost semantic. But you get a hum when you, when you it But of course, if, if you were to coil tap it and still it still remain as a humbucker, you wouldn't expect to hear that slight you're increase right, you're in right, background you're right. noise. So you're so saying that Gibson might... and Epiphone are wrong? Oh, it's just specs. It's He's saying I... Epiphone are no, wrong. No, I think it's because so many people just go, oh my God, man, are we really still having the debate about is it a tap or is it a split? Well, you are. Or... Look at yeah, you. I suppose. Anyway, so there we are. do anything. This one's feeling left out. Please pull me. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Pot. You've been just, you're just a normal like a, one. Like you're not one of the special children, I'm afraid. You're just a normal, normal volume. Please pull me like pop. a 2 p.m. You know, the hang, hang around outside the club, you know, <laughs> wait, waiting just to get a taxi <laughs> two, two home. PM, the 10.2 p.m. The 2 p.m. When, when people do the 2 p.m. sweep, <laughs> oh, you know. No. 
Oh dear, oh dear. That's been a long time since those days. We didn't really show you the tone controls. Look, it's great guitar. It's like we 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 fill these videos up with sort of frivolity, just because, to be honest with you, if we just told you about the specs of the guitar, it'd be done in two minutes. Well, also, we just like to have a bit of a laugh, because we we're not very serious people. We're not serious I don't know if you've people. noticed. Well, yeah, we, we dress up, we take the mickey out of ourselves, we, you know, we, we, we have a lot of banter that some people may find offensive, some people may not, you know, it's just, hopefully if you're a kind of liberal-minded, happy-go-lucky kind of guy or girl, you'll be cool watching this channel and buy into the whole... <laughs> On that note, I've been Rob Chapman. I've been the captain. Let's S jam this mother <laughs> out. Tell me about Rory. So he uh, edits videos. Rory's awesome. <laughs> <laughs>